Malia Stevens is a counselor from Birmingham, family and marriage counselor. She does a lot of work with pornography addiction and those kinds of things. She is also a board member on the National Center for Sexual Exploitation. That's an organization we work with a lot. She has a really important bill that we have been trying to get passed for the last three years. And um, she's going to just tell you a little bit about what you don't want to know about pornography, how pervasive it is, how it is really hurting our children and skyrocketing child on child sex crimes are just through the roof because of accidental online pornography. So please welcome Malia Stevens and her bio is in the QR code. Such a great honor to be with all of you and um, that was a great presentation um, on the gambling issue. Um, I, the, I'm just going to talk about another process addiction. That's what you call these behavioral addictions, gambling, pornography addiction. Um, so as Becky said, I'm a marriage and family therapist and I've been with the National Center on Sexual Exploitation for over 10 years now. I got involved with this issue because I was seeing young children addicted to pornography um, from really good homes here in Birmingham. Uh, little boys, little girls, ages 6 to 11, who had had their brain hijacked by online hardcore pornography and after just one or two exposures that sent them into a traumatized state where children don't know what to do when they're exposed to pornography so they tend to want to act out on other siblings and playmates so it creates this cycle of child on child harmful sexual behavior we're seeing skyrocketing rates of that as well as so many other societal ills that are coming directly from um, exposure to this illegal material um, our department of justice you know our laws on the books um, would say that internet pornography is completely, um, hardcore pornography is not permitted on the internet. Our cable or satellite TVs, um, hotel motel, um, all that is on our, according to our federal obscenity laws, it's illegal, but our Department of Justice has not been enforcing federal obscenity laws, so we have these massive problems and the pornography industry has taken advantage of their ability to it just come after our children. And believe me, they have a target on the heads of all of our children. I don't know if any of you got to see the Senate hearing last week where they grilled um, all the social media company executives on um, you know, how they're harming our children, knowingly profiting from our children. And at one point they uh, questioned Mark Zuckerberg and they, sh they yeah, they sh made him apologize to parents whose children had died um, because of social media exploitation but also they showed in their documents that they put a price tag on children of $270. That's their profit, their lifetime profit for a child. They, big tech and the pornography industry put a target on our children. And pornography industry in particular, they're so sinister, they do tricky things like um, when you misspell Disney or Nickelodeon, um, it'll send you straight to a hardcore pornography site. They, they want to trick children into early accidental exposure because they know the sooner they get them hooked, the more potential money they make. Um, so it's, it's, it's very sinister. So the bill we're presenting, um, it's actually Representative Chris Sells. This is his fifth time to bring this bill forward. Um, but it's Eagle Forum's third time, my third time to be involved with it. Um, and I'm very grateful for Representative Chris Sells. He's very tenacious about this bill. He cares about this issue. He has a lot of conviction around this for children. And he's had to fight really hard to get it um, as far as we have. Um, and then Eagle Forum has done an excellent job um, fighting extremely difficult uh, battles on this too. But it's, right now the bill is called the Children's Device Protection Bill, the Alabama Children's Device Protection Bill. So the title is a little bit different from last year, um, but same, pretty much the same bill. It's been slightly updated because of technology. We've got it slightly improved. The Children's Device Protection Bill mandates that smartphones and tablets automatically enable existing filters for all minors and allows for civil action if manufacturers fail to comply. So all of our smartphones and tablets have filter, filtering software. Um, on the, in the device. A lot of parents don't realize that it's there. Um, research shows that 47% of young children will stumble upon pornography accidentally on a smartphone or tablet. So it seems like a no-brainer that, that the filtering software would be de defaulted on as opposed to off for our, the protection of our children and in compliance with our existing state and federal laws. Um, so it's, it's, the bill actually just requires a very simple software update. We've talked to 
Um, some <coughs> software developers from Apple, they say this would be a matter of hours for the company to just change it in the, um, in the system so that it is very, it automatically comes on when the phone is activated for a minor in Alabama. It's very simple for them to do because of biometrics in the, you know, in the device. So it's, it's a simple, very surgical, easy thing to do. And the other great benefit to this is that it's constitutionally sound. We, um, there's two Supreme Court rulings that say that the least restrictive means to protect children from exposure to pornography or to, spec to protect people from obscene material is at the device filter level. So that's why the, the pornography industry and big tech fight us so hard on this bill, because they know it will stand up in court. That, th that if this gets pushed, if this gets passed, it's, it's gonna be pretty solid done deal. Um, and it has very broad reaching impact for children. Is it gonna be a silver bullet and protect kids in every way of exposure to pornography? No, but it will be very helpful in protecting young children from accidental exposure and it raises a standard for families um, to be able to say, oh wait, the devices should be filtered. They should be protected for kids. And wait, is my phone, is my phone, is it safe for children? It starts to raise that awareness across the board for families too. And in particular, it protects young children who do not have involved caregivers. Um, I got to speak at a school in a, in, in a underprivileged area of town and they asked me to speak on um, sexual abstinence issues. And um, this was for very young elementary age children, then the school called me and said, would you please come speak on this issue? But they're a Christian, a Christian organization. And I said, do you have parents' permission? And they said, oh, parents, these kids don't have parents. They're not, they, they're raised by aunts, uncles, grandparents, etc." And I was like, okay, if you're sure. And, and so came and spoke, and these children had been so pornified. These little girls, um, sixth grade, sitting there asking me questions that, about things a sixth grader should not know but they have been raised on sexual miseducation on their devices. They don't have involved caregivers. These children are acting out sexually on other children. That's what the school called and said, can you please come speak on this because we're seeing such rampant issues um, and they're so confused and they have very deviant sexual behavior um, because this is what they think is normal. Children have mirror neurons. They're gonna copy what they see. That's what, they, that's what they're trained to do. And we as adults are supposed to guard them and protect them and set up better examples for children. So I'm very excited about this bill because last session we had great bipartisan support. We had 67 co-sponsors in the House, um, the bipartisan co-sponsors, and we got it through Senate committee with bipartisan support. We had the votes for it to pass, but it was blocked, it was prevented from being voted on um, in the Senate to, to go to be a, you know, to go to Governor Ivey's desk. So thankfully we've got, um, you know, we've got a, good, a lot of support. We know we have, we're pretty confident we have the votes. We just have to get past these barriers. And like I said, we fight the big, t the big tech companies and the pornography industry. They, the, we know from this just recently that the pornography industry was speaking to lobbyists in, in Montgomery as the pornography industry and um, that kind of got back to us and, and a lot of times though they come behind other groups, they'll come behind like business associations or um, tele, uh, telecommunications companies um, or um, groups like NetChoice which are like tech conglomerates and they, they don't come out as the pornography industry, they come behind these other groups and then they send out these misinformation campaigns and they say crazy things like, oh this bill is going to hurt business in Alabama. How's it going to hurt business in Alabama? Or, oh, this bill is going to require that Alabama, um, Alabama is going to have to have their own special phones made just for our state, which is ridiculous. It's a software update. It's, it's, it's very simple. It's just like any software update you get on your phone. But they're going to spend stuff like that. But thankfully, our legislators are, st are starting to really see through the um, confusion and they, um, you know, they are understanding this is about protecting children and it is us against the porn industry and coming after our kids. So um, we've got a lot of growing support in the Senate right now, which is very encouraging um, as well. So we, we need your prayers and your support to, uh, once we get our social media campaign launched very soon, we have a, a, an X on X, you know, formerly Twitter. We have a, um, it's called Protect AL Kids Online. It will be launched uh, very soon. We just got the thumbs up from our 
sponsors, and I should mention um, in the Senate this this go round is Senator Clyde Chambliss is our uh, lead, leader there, our sponsor there, and so we'll be having that social media campaign launched. Once it once it goes out, we'll need everybody to help us circulate the post, the videos, and the petitions. We're going to have online petitions like we had last session. Um, and so when people sign those petitions, they'll go straight into the inboxes of all of our legislators. So we, we really appreciate that because we need the momentum from just the citizens to, to fight the, and leverage the, the, the money and the power from the tech, uh, the tech and the porn lobby. Um, so there's a lot more I can say about the effects of pornography, but um, I'm happy to talk about that or, or I can answer questions. I, I want, would you be able to explain the other bill and just give us so sure. people don't get confused about the two. Okay, sure. There's actually a couple of other bills that have to do with pornography that are being introduced this session. Uh, one has to do with AI porn, but it's it's not related to devices. Um, and it's I think Attorney General um, Steve Marshall is I think his office is helping out with that one. Um, and there's another one that's called the uh, Age Verification Bill, um, and basically it's saying that pornography should be restricted at this website level, um, which, you know, I'm unhappy for any level of protection that there could be for children. Um, and the National Center on Sexual Exploitation uh, is happy to see those things cast. The reason we don't go and, and push that legislation is because it's not constitutionally sound and it's not supported at the Supreme Court level. But if it passes, I mean, that's wonderful. But the problem is that in other states, they really use that legislation to try to combine it with our legislation. The porn industry sometimes will back that group. I'm not saying that's, that the person who's sponsoring it is doing that, but that the porn industry will try to use that legislation to combine it with ours to sink our bill. So we cannot let it be combined. That's what they did in Texas last session. Um, they did it in I think, Montana last session. I think it was Montana. Other states, they'll try to sink us because they know our bill has teeth in it and it will stick. And the other bill in many states where it's passed, the age verification legislation is tangled up in the courts. Um, they'll, they'll, you'll see in the media, oh, porn hubs left the state of, you know, uh, Texas, Texas or Virginia or what have you. Um, it, and Ken Pax are doing a good job with it in Texas, but there is, but it, there's, it's a lot more going on behind things than what it looks like. And it's not, um, it's, it's not being enforced the way that is intended to be enforced. And anyway, so just to say, it's we can't let them be combined. So we could support both, but we just don't want them to come together. Yes. Yeah, so or let one, we don't want the other one to push ours off the plate. Right. <laughs> and, and that. And the National Center of Sexual Exploitation does not formally endorse interification, but we don't want to stand in the way of it either. We think it's great if it passes. We have five more minutes for you. Would you go ahead and give some more important updates like you were, what you wanted to talk about for? We've got questions. Oh, you, well, okay, let's just do questions then. Come on up, Mary. But we also talk about the obscenity laws and how they relate to schools and everything else. Sure. Contrary to popularly held beliefs, uh, pornography or um, anything that is of that nature, obscene behavior, is not protected free speech. What anything, what some things can uh, define as legal obscenity, it is not protected by the First Amendment. Just like if you yelled fire in a crowded theater, that would be a violation of free, free speech, or you threaten someone, say, give me your purse or else. That is not free speech. We, you know, the, the Supreme Court has upheld on several occasions that um, the pornography, hardcore pornography, the softcore pornography, which is just your old 1950s, 60s, old Playboy, which you think of that, um, is, is considered legal, but only in like certain restricted places, like adult bookstores. Um, so we're not enforcing our laws. And, and also as far as lewd and lascivious behavior, as you were mentioning, Mary, there's, um, that's prohibiting all our laws too. Is it enforced very well at the county level in Alabama? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, but it's, it's illegal. Um, but we just have to encourage more enforcement of our laws. I see it in a sincere responsibility. Why do we have to rape these bonds so we have lost? Why are we holding our country and citizens and service people, everybody responsible? That's good character, that's who we are as human people. 
Like, agreed. Agreed. So I, why are you not protecting human dignity? And we need an administration. We do. So the, the, that the, oh, that pours the law. Yes. Back under Reagan, the Seekins, Bush Senior, uh, the Department of Justice had a very robust obscenity section at the Department of you know, the obscenity oversight section was very robust and very involved. And he kept pornography and all those types of industries very restricted. But then when Ashcroft became Attorney General, um, it's there's a history there, but he took his hand off of obscenity and looked towards other things. And he was warned, if you take your hand off of obscenity, the pornography industry is going to explode. He didn't listen to the warning. He looked elsewhere. And so that's when it started to weaken. And and it went un- under George Dr. Bush and under Clinton. Very few cases were tried. Um, and then when Obama came into office under Eric Holder, he completely, within the first couple of weeks, I believe it was, of his administration, they completely got rid of the obscenity section of the Department of Justice. So we we have book, laws in the books, but until we get some people in the DFA who really have character and integrity around that issue, we're not going to see that come from the federal level. So we've got to do all these other state op- you know, operations to protect our kids. One thing I love about Eagle Forum is it's not just about policy. It's not just about building grassroots. It's not just about protecting families. We have a lot of prayer warriors, and we're based on biblical principles, and we love the Lord. And this is a time where we really need to pray that strongholds are broken down. Parents are waking up. Things are changing. But we, it is going to be God that allows us to really get a hold of this. So we need you guys to be grateful for that experience. And we need our churches in the lot. We need our pastors. I know pastors are reluctant to speak about political issues, but our legislators will listen to pastors. So if you have a pastor who's willing to put his name on the letter or to go visit with legislators, especially if we start to get resistance from conservative leadership, we need them to come with me to go meet with those legislators and help them understand that people really want to see this ass in Alabama. That you're right, prayer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Isn't it great to have her on the team?